Lesson number seven, part B, parallel circuits. So in this lesson, we're going to learn about how we apply some more Ohm's law to calculate current voltage resistance, but resistance in particular. So here we're going to be looking at resistance in parallel circuits, and then we're going to summarize what we've done in lessons one and two at this point. So resistance in a parallel circuit. As the resistances are added in parallel, we will note that the resistance actually goes down. So here, if we are adding resistors in parallel, the total current increases. If you remember our Ohm's law, if the voltage of the, the applied voltage remains the same, if the resistance goes down, the current must go up. They're inversely proportional, we say. So adding other resistors in a parallel increases the total current. And if the total, therefore the total resistance of the circuit has decreased. So if the current's going up, then the resistance must be going down as long as the voltage is staying the same. So that's what we're indicating here in our two drawings. So let's look at the two drawings in a little bit of detail. I'll just uh, turn the pen on. On drawing A, you can see here the current is at 2.5 amps because I've got half an amp in this branch and I've got two amps in this branch giving me two and a half amps created by our 100 ohms and our 25 ohms which are connected in parallel and we have a 50 volt supply. You can do the ohms law calc if you don't believe me but for now we'll just say 0.5 and 2 amps. So in our second circuit now in B it's exactly the same except we've now added this one over here. We've added the 50 ohms. So 50 ohms on 50 volts, doesn't ha not hard to do that math in your head. We have an extra one amp now flowing here. Therefore, instead of having two and a half amps coming from the supply, we've now got three and a half amps coming from the supply. So by adding another resistor, the current has increased and if the current has increased then the resistance must have decreased. So here our total is a particular value and here our total must have gone down because current went up. Of course, Ohm's law tells us that the current is inversely proportional to the resistance. So how do we go about calculating total resistance? So when to total resistance and current is applied and the voltages are known, the total resistance RT can be found with the Ohm's law formula. So as long as we know what the voltage applied is and we know what the current total is, then we can work out what the resistance total is. So V is the voltage, the applied voltage. I is the total current in the circuit. If we know those two things, then simple Ohm's law, V on I equals R. So the general equation to find R total, when each of the branch currents is known in a parallel circuit, the general equation to find R is. Now this looks very complicated 
but it's not as complicated as you might think. You can see across the bottom of the screen there I've written reciprocal of the addition of all the reciprocals. So the way we find out our total is we add up all the inverses and then we inverse it back. So let me just get the, the pen out and let me describe mathematically what's happening on the screen. So this is the first bit I need you to look at. That is the inverse of R1. 1 on R1 is the inverse. Now, by the way, we'll look at this on our calculator at the moment. There, on your calculator, there's a button called X to the minus 1. This is the same as 1 on X. So some calculators use this. And some calculators use this. It's the same thing. So we're taking the inverse of R1 and we're inversing R2 and we're adding it to it. We're inversing R3 and adding it together. And then when we've added them all together, we're inversing it back again to get the total. So we take each of the resistance values, we inverse them, we add them together, and then we inverse them back at the end. Gives us R total. Or you can write it like this. 1 on R equals 1 on R1 plus 1 on R2 plus 1 on R3. You'll notice that this is exactly the same equation arrangement as the one above. It's exactly the same. The only difference is we've now put the R above the 1, the inverse above the total. So again, it's inverse of R1 plus the inverse of R2 plus the inverse of R3, and then we invert it all back to get R total. So reciprocal or inverse, you can do it two ways. So the first way, reciprocal or inverse, is the number 1 divided by the number you wish to reciprocate. And we express that mathematically as 1 on x. So for example, if I wanted to get the reciprocal of 24, I'm just using this as an example here, so Reciprocal of 24 is 1 divided by 24, and if you get your calculator out and you go 1 divided by 24, it will give you 0 0.1466. The second way to do it is to use the x to the minus 1 key on your calculator. It's also the reciprocal or the inverse. So this function, whoops, we've jumped across. This function is also on your calculator, and again, if you do the reciprocal, x to the minus 1, you will get the same number, 0 0.01466. So those two numbers are the same. It doesn't matter whether you use 1 on x, or you use x to the minus 1, it's the same thing. It's the reciprocal of the value. And it's these reciprocated values that we need to add together. So here's a little example. And my suggestion to you is that you use the um, reciprocate x to the minus 1 button on your calculator and then get your answer and then reciprocate back. Don't try and do 1 on x on 1 on r1 plus 1 on r2 plus 1 on r3 all in one equation, even though you might have a VPAM calculator, because unless you get the parentheses in just the right places, it actually won't work. So what I'm saying is simply this. In this particular case, we need to work out these one at a time. 
So we have uh, one at 100 ohms, R2 at 220, and R3 at 330. So if I punch into my calculator the following, and I'll just do it here. If you punch in 100 x to the minus 1 plus 200 x to the minus 1 plus 330 x to the minus 1 and I should have written 220 there and then when you press the equal sign on your calculator you will get that number so probably a good idea to pause the video here get out your calculator and give that a try then once you've got that number then go press on your calculator press answer on my calculator just ANS brings the answer back up go answer X to the minus 1 press equals and you will get 56.896 etc 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 so the secret is to do all your reciprocal additions get this funny number it's always going to be a number less than zero funny little number and then once you've got that number then do answer x to the minus 1 and reciprocate it back and get your final answer in ohms. Now the thing I want you to also note here, apart from the mathematics, again is the physics. You know that I like to hound the physics itself and you'll notice that whenever you're adding resistors in parallel, the total resistance, the R total, is always going to be smaller than the smallest resistor. So R total, right? The smallest resistor on this network is the 100 ohms. So you've got to say to yourself, when I do my parallel addition of all my resistors, I have to end up with a number that's less than 100. If I end up with an answer that's not less than 100, I've made a mistake. Because when you are adding resistors in parallel, the physics demands that the resistance value for the total network, the R total, has to be less than the smallest resistor in that parallel network. So one more quick example. Here we've got 8K, 2K and 1.6K and we want to find R total. So again, it's the it's the same trick again. You can put one divided by eight times ten to the minus three into your calculator. But if you've got a decent calculator, we would do eight times ten to the minus 3 multiplied by x to the minus 1 add so on and so forth and then when you get to the end reciprocate it all back and in this particular case we should end up with 800 ohms and with our previous example what's our smallest resistor here we've got 1.6 K is the smallest resistor. So is R total smaller than 1.6? The answer is yes. So there's a good chance we've got the correct answer because 800 ohms is smaller than 1.6 K, which is the smallest resistance in the network here. 
So if this circuit only has two resistors in it, two in parallel, we can use a shortcut formula, and this is it. So R total is equal to R1 multiplied by R2 plus R1 on R2. Nice and handy. And what if the resistors all have the same value? So if all the resistors have the same value, so if I'm adding up, I've got 10 resistors and they're all at 100 ohms, I've just got to go 100 ohms divided by the number of resistors tells me the R total. So let's do a quick little example. So let's say I had a network and I've got 10 resistors and each of the resistors, I've got 100 of them. 100 ohms and I've got times 10 of them in a parallel network. So I've got 100 divided by the number of resistors I've got is 10. Therefore, my 10 doesn't look too good. There we go. 10, I end up with 10 ohms is the R total. For a network of 100 resistors, or 10 of them, 100 ohm resistors, 10 of them in parallel. So, another quick example using the quick methodology. So, in this little example, we've got 12 volt supply, 60 ohms and 40 ohms. And we want to find out what the R total is. We can simply use the shortcut of R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, which is going to be our 60 multiplied by 40 and then 60 plus 40 which is 2400 divided by 100 and that comes out at 24 ohms and I could have used the 1 on 60 plus 1 on 40 and then add it all back and then inverse it again and I would get to exactly the same place. Now that I have the I total sorry, the R total, what am I saying? The R total. At 24 ohms, I can now work out the current. So the I total is the applied voltage divided by the R total. So 12 divided by 24, giving me a half an amp of current. So I've got 0 0.5 of an amp or half an amp going into my circuit. So let's sum up our last two lessons just quickly. The voltage is the same across all the components in a parallel circuit. So the supply voltage is the voltage drop across each of the components or the loads. The branch currents can be found with Ohm's law or Kirchhoff's current law, depending on what you do and don't know. The total resistance of a parallel circuit is always less than the lowest value of the branch resistance. So that ends our uh, lesson number seven, part B. I hope you've enjoyed learning something about uh, resistors in parallel in parallel circuits.